Hello, everybody. This is Bradley Grunner with the Moss Macros Podcast. And today I have my usual guests on, Stu Yellen, WMBF Pro, and Arash Rabar, IFBB Pro. And today we also have a special guest, Chris Colucci. And today we're going to discuss the rise of social media and its effect on bodybuilding. So, Chris, would you like to uh, give us a little bit of a background? I mean, you are a reputable source on this, considering that you actually do work for a website and moderate a forum, a very well-known forum. Could you please uh, go over your background? (laughs) Uh, Okay, really quick. Um, I've been a personal trainer, and I've been affiliated with uh, TNation.com, one of the top uh, bodybuilding information websites around. I've done editing for them. I'm currently their forum director. And uh, so I know a thing or two about uh, talking online about uh, bodybuilding, fitness, nutrition, and, and all that. Right. I mean, but you've, you've been through it all, considering your age and your experience. I mean, you've been through the entire evolution. I mean, we all have, actually. But you, you actually work in the industry, so to speak. You actually do work in bodybuilding media. And mm-hmm. you've seen the evolution of all of this media. I mean, you've been th- we've all been through it, actually. But especially you, considering that you work in it. Uh, we've all seen the uh, evolution of it, so to speak, the change in it, meaning going from, let's say, the newsstand, the magazine, then to the internet in the mid-90s on these obscure forums where they didn't have all these kinds of graphics on the on the screen and all kinds of interact. I mean, there wasn't interaction. There were listservs. I would call it a listserv, you know, somewhat like a forum, but there was just text. There weren't these flashy graphics. You didn't know who you were talking to all the time. And we've all been through that whole series of events from the newsstand to the AOL chat room to the forum to social media now. Now, guys, let's go through this a little bit. I want to have everybody's take on this is that we'll go one by one. How do you think that this has changed? I mean, were the the newsstand magazines very helpful to all of you back in the day? I mean, we've come to a point where the attention span is weaning probably because of the instant gratification of social media. I thought that the the magazines and books served me very well because I had the patience to look for the information that I was looking for. You know, I would look for specific authors. Like I was a big fan of Dorian Yates' articles, big fan of Dante Trudell's articles, Dan Duchesne's articles, Chris Aceto, all these guys who write these lengthy books and articles. And it kind of like, you know, training is not that complicated. Nutrition is not that complicated, but it kind of put together the loose ends for me. And it, it was very helpful for me. I mean, what do you think is going on now? Is it a matter of effort versus attention span? Uh, what is your take on it? Uh, Arash, you would like to go first on that? Sure, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. Uh, to answer your question, the magazines uh, were great for me, you know, but uh, that being said, they were they were the only thing at that time. You know, we're talking uh, 15, 20 years ago um, when I started to work out, I had uh, nowhere else besides the, the older guys in the gym I had the magazines and yeah, you know, I sat down and read through page by page front and back and, 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 uh, went through the whole entire magazine and onto the next and onto the next. Um, it requires, um, the desire and a little bit of patience, but you know, we use the word patience today because of social media, because is, you know, instant gratification, like you said, and people are just buzzing through liking a picture and gone. Um, back then, I mean, to sit down and read a book or a magazine, it, it was the norm, you know? Um, that being said, I, I feel like social media, if, if in any way it's, it's taken away from the magazines or the forums, it's, it's very sad to say because it, it's not taking their place as far as, uh, the amount of knowledge and information sharing that there are on forums, even till today and in magazines, it's more, you know, a quick little, uh, a, a paragraph or two or a sentence and, most of the time, people don't even read it. They just take a look at the picture or take a look at the video. And I feel it's more about just viewing people you may know or look up to or like rather than educating yourself on the topic. I definitely would not steer somebody onto a social media page if they asked me how to get started in bodybuilding or if they asked me how to do an exercise or if they asked me what's the best type of diet. I would tell them to you know use a search engine or go on a reputable site like T-Nation. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, somewhat similar, but worlds apart, you know, that's, that's my take on it. I mean, um, 
Yeah, so I, that's a very good point. I mean, Stu, do you have do you have anything to add on that? I mean, how has it affected you? I mean, Arash had his experience with the magazines and books and how it benefited him. Did you have the same experience? Do you think that the books were more useful to you? I mean, we're seeing the diminishing attention span here. Someone gets on a forum, says, hi, guys, what should I eat? Hi, how do I get cut? When usually a post in itself, no one has the time to write a book. An experienced person does not have the time to write a book's length essay in response to a question like that. My view is that, okay, maybe you should read a bit on nutrition in general or training I mean, is that the same sentiment that you have, Stu? I mean, do you see where I'm going with this? Well, I mean, you know, if we're going to uh, uh, discuss, I, I guess, going from uh, print print magazines to to the internet, and I mean, look, uh, I guess there's there, there's two things you could throw out there, uh, especially if you know if I were going to pull from my own experience, there were you know I guess two two things that that, that could you know factor into where I first thought forums were very very helpful. Uh, one, uh, you know, realizing that magazines were to sell products, 100%. They were there to sell products. The articles you were reading were written by the same people, you know, and this is, this, this is still years before I realized that, you know, Ron Harris was writing every single article for <laughs> Moscow Development Magazine. You know, I, I, I realized like, wow, um, you know, Ronnie Coleman is very eloquent. Who knew? Um, you know, or, or, you know, you know, looking back, you know, in, in, in the years since I got into this and uh, learning about the history, it's like, wow, look at that. Um, everyone thinks you need tons of protein powder. Well, look at that. Joe Weider sold protein powder. So, you know, you become a little jaded with the magazines after a while. Uh, they still served as a, a, a source of inspiration, but I think there was a, a certain jadedness you reach with them. Uh, the internet you know, and, and and this is you know again I'm 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 talking about the forums at this point where we're not even social media. Um, even if you're 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 dealing with a a, a site a, a reputable site and and you know I know Chris is here from T Nation I love T Nation I've been on there since 1998 myself. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> yes. I've been there a long time. Um, and yeah, it it is backed by a supplement company, and you know I've I, I like their supplements. I've been using them forever. Um, but you have other people that you're getting their opinions and you know i that in and of itself is is a double edged sword but you know sometimes just throwing something up there and hearing other people other real people people with different experience levels different knowledge levels um sometimes that can be a a, a good thing and i think that's why the the forums were such such a big thing and like you know i'll say the late 90s into the the early 2000s there yes. you know which um you know i have nothing to to back up what i'm about to say but you know i say the the, the heights, the, the golden age of bodybuilding web forums, yeah. you know, and that was, uh, that was some good stuff. And yeah, yeah, there's downsides to that too, but, uh, you know, I'll, look, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to keep, keep babbling, but, uh, you know, as, as, as far as being very useful to me, I, I thought the forums were great. I relied on them a, a lot. That doesn't mean I believe what everyone said. Um, but you know, you would interact with the same people you develop, uh, opinions on them you, you learn their backgrounds you know uh, look brad i interacted with you on on, on a web forum long before uh, you know we, we became friends in real life and i remember thinking like wow this this guy really seemed to know what he's talking about oh look at that he's a registered dietitian oh look at that he did his thesis with this guy oh look at wow uh, yeah. okay um and on the other side of the coin you had people that you know just you know i know i know i know i know and well, you really don't you know you you really don't and there's 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 web forums for you Right, exactly. exactly. I, definitely all these points by Arash and Stu hit home with me also is that I like the forums also because I've been a fan of bodybuilding even before I even started lifting weights. And I said in previous podcasts of ours that I was already following bodybuilding through books and magazines. I was just mesmerized by the images of these people and I just love to read the books. And also, as I said before, training and nutrition is not that complicated for the most part. But there are always loose ends that people have to put together or stumbling blocks. Like, for example, I remember I was on, let's say, well, the usual split that I am on, an upper-lower split where I train each muscle group twice per week. And I eventually started to incorporate sprints into it. And also, I just simply went on the forum and said, well, where, where do you guys place your sprints? But I wasn't asking them to write me a program. I was saying, this is my experience my sprint sessions are interfering with my leg recovery. Where should I place them? But I'm not asking people to write me a program. Uh, I noticed recently that people sometimes on these forums are asking very 
um, broad questions, and it means they have more homework to do the same way we did, all did our homework through actual reading full texts worth of work, meaning maybe reading a short book on bodybuilding nutrition, meaning that it's not that complicated. When I went into it, even before I studied nutrition at school, is that you had to read, okay, what am I going to eat for protein? You read the list of protein sources in, the, in a book. You go to these how to make a template for yourself. Now I find that people are going the instant gratification route where they actually want someone to write them an entire program or write them entire diets. It's almost like it's going into instant gratification versus digging and effort. Have all of you noticed this? I mean, we, we've touched upon where it's going now. Like Stu, you said that there were people who are knowing what they're talking about versus the uh, pseudo experts that came out of it. And now, yes, do you, do you have you noticed it? Like that, there's less digging. I mean, Chris, you've been moderating forums for some time. I mean, that's how you actually got into a role in T Nation to be employed by them. Uh, do you, you you know where I'm going? This because you are, are always right. active and helpful and you know, helping right. beginners. I mean, do you, I think this is actually, you know, stifling a learning curve where it's making it even more drawn out where the guy could have reached his goals long ago by doing some digging. It, yeah. To an extent. Yeah. There's definitely, you know, the internet itself leads to enough information overload. And when, when somebody's a beginner, when they're, when they're new to the gym, you know, they want a quick answer. They want to know what do I need to do? And, I know whenever I answer that question, I try to be as in-depth and give enough information, and I don't like giving quick answers. I like educating. Um, so, you know, a, a discussion forum has that potential to, to somebody can ask a question, I can respond. They can come back two weeks later and say, ah, I did that, you know, this happened, what do I do now? And you can have more, more of a rapport, you can build more of a rapport, like Stu was saying, you know, you get to know the person. I can remember somebody that posted a year ago. I can see what we talked about. And you build that connection in an ongoing conversation. Uh, but, you know, it definitely can lead to uh, an oversimplification if the wrong people answer. Right. And we've seen that happen. <laughs> it, it happens. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a group effort also is, is the other side of it. Because a forum is a forum. It's a community. It's a group. Right. Um, there's, there's, unfortunately there's pluses and minuses to that. There's pros and cons. It, um, uh, it takes a village to raise a bodybuilder. <laughs> it does. See? Leave no body unbuilt. <laughs> well, do you mean a well, well, you're going meaning a village to, to make a bodybuilder. Do you mean that a bodybuilder needs all this help and advice or, uh, well, they're going to get it anyway. They're going to get it whether they want it or not. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I see what you're saying now. Uh, I, I've noticed that what you're talking about, actually, I've been on the forums for quite some time and T nation is my favorite forum actually. Uh, so, well, what I'm getting, you know, what I'm getting at here is that I, I just, I, I am reiterating to a degree. Um, is it that people do not want to do the hard work these days? Do you think that it's just, did the internet make people like this or, or, or is just that how people have became after a while where they don't want to do the hard work? I mean, I think that's a bigger social commentary than we can get into right here. Yes. Um, I think it's probably a little of both. If you have a 16-year-old kid who wants to start working out, is he going to go to the library or the newsstand and track down a magazine? Or is he going to go on, you know, follow a, a bodybuilder on Instagram and get a 15-second clip, you know? It's, right. It's a little of both. Right. But the thing is, it seems like it came to uh, two extremes now, or actually, is that it's either someone's going to ask questions online that are so vague and broad, such as, what do I eat to bulk up? What do I do to cut? I mean, obviously, you don't need so much information to reach those goals. But now it's either someone's going to ask these quick questions or hire a coach. Now, whatever happened to self, some self-reliance? I understand that, um, you know, even some of the best hire a coach. But whatever happened to something in between? I mean, I'm going to figure this out for myself. And I'm going to ask for other people for advice when I reach, you know, maybe a loose end that I got to tie together. I'm confused about what direction to go. Um, Arash, could you chime in on that? Like, you see where I'm going where, there with that? I mean, what, you know, with the hard work. I mean, I remember, like you said before, we, we were people that actually were using some of our ingenuity saying, hey, I want to get from point A to point B. 
let me apply the information that I'm reading and use it for myself. Where did this go? How, what, what, is there still a usefulness to self-reliance in, this, in of, the midst of this? Of course there is, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's a generation change that we're in. Uh, I think going back to the, our first topic, uh, the, the magazines, you know, I said they were very useful, but that's all I had at that time. And then the forums that, you know, that came after and that, that was much more useful as, as Stu touched on and I agree with him. Um, I think people tend to veer towards whatever's easiest, unfortunately, you know, not everybody, but if, you know, if there's a guy standing next to you that you think he might know because he looks a certain way or there's a book across the hall, I mean, most people are going to turn to the guy and ask him, you know, and that guy is, is social media, you know, it's, it's a lot easier and, and funner and more exciting uh, to just, you know, jump on your phone, uh, you know, while you're in the car, unfortunately, or between classes or at a break at work and just jump on social media and skim through rather than buying a book or actually using the Google search engine and, and, and trying to find and piece together things for yourself. And, and one other thing is that these, these people we're talking about, they're not all hardcore bodybuilders. They're not all champions. They're not all trying to become professionals or even Mr. Olympia. So the bigger the sport gets and the more mainstream it is that it's become very much, it's much more mainstream this past couple of years with all the new divisions. Um, the more of that you're going to have, the more of the people that are not going to go and do what we did, you know, us, us four sitting here, we, you know, we're, we're pretty much the underground hardcore. We've been doing this for two decades and, and we, we, we love it so much and take it so seriously that we, we do the research and we still, we did in the beginning to learn and we still do. So a lot of the mainstream, I think they're not going to do that, you know, and, and they're going to take the easier way out, which there's absolutely no comparison because, again, there, there's not much information and knowledge, in my opinion. There is some to be found, but not much on social media. So that's my take. Something I think that's interesting, Arash, if I could, if I could chime in here. Um, you know, you, you mentioned, like, you know, the four of us here, and, you know, we're all relatively close in age and... Uh, I think we're all, uh, you know, I guess that uh, I'll say I'll say educated. We 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 love learning. We love uh, getting information. Um, you know, uh, you know, Brad Brad will tell you. It's like I remember the first time he was at my old apartment, and you know, he was looking looking at all my books. And I, I have textbooks from you know college classes, science classes, nutrition classes that I never took. I would just buy these things online. It's like <laughs> I, I I needed this stuff, you know, because the crap nutrition class I took when I was in college that was, that was a long time ago. Um, but I, but I needed to know everything. You know, I started competing. Uh, I needed to, you know, find every bit of information, anything that would give me an edge, any, and I would get excited with this stuff. And, you know, Brad, Brad was the only other person who would get as, you know, hyper as I would like, Oh dude, you got to read this. You know, like, whoa, 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 what do you make of this? Um, you know, and it was, you know, you're building your perfect monster. You know, it's like every little <laughs> bolt you can throw in there. This is awesome. He's going to have, you know, laser beams out of his eyes, but he's going to, he's going to have, you know, freeze ray out of his hands. And, you know, it's like every little advantage you thought you could get. And you had to do the research to find that. Um, but we're also, you know, I was saying with the ages before, we're all at that point where I think we're kind of straddling, uh, I hate to say old school, but we remember when all we had were the magazines. You know, we remember when you wanted to find out who won the Olympia, you weren't going to know till two months later when, when flex came out, you know? And, and by that point, you know, you could, you couldn't go online and call out Steve Weinberger to see those score sheets, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, it, it was done. You had those photos and, you know, you'd be like, Oh, this guy didn't deserve to win. And then, you know, no nah, man, you know, this other guy in the gym, his cousin's friend's neighbor was that there. And, and he, he said it looked totally different in person. You didn't, you know, you were so removed from everything, you know, and, and this, the, the current generation, you know, I mean, you, you know, you guys have all touched on this. It's, it's different. They don't know that. They don't know that it really was a very different time. Right. I mean, I, I, as I said before, I, I was following this for some time even before I lifted a weight and <laughs> I mean, I like the rise of the forums and the social media. Both, I love both because I've actually met people through the social media. I mean, like that's how you and I became friends, and that's how I, you know, in turn know Chris now is from so, in a way, the forum, which is a form of social media, I guess, before the Facebook and Twitter and MySpace, etc. Don't forget MySpace. Yes, exactly, and before that, but MySpace. it's coming uh, back. But in some ways, I like it because we're all here now, and I met two of the people that I'm with actually through this new media on the internet. But then again, I did like some of the mystique 
and I'm sure you can really mean the mystique mean just the magazine. You know, I cannot log onto this guy's Facebook page. I mean, this is a guy behind the scenes in this world that I cannot be a part of. You, you know what I'm trying to say, Stu? Like, where it was a lot of the mystique, and like now you could go online and say, hey, you know, this is a regular guy that I could chat with, I could pop him on his Facebook page, I'll ask him a question, he'll respond. Such as some of the guys that are very helpful, some of these pros that put themselves out there, interact with the fans online. But for me, I like both of the ends of it, but I'm just going to add in here that, you know, in order to see a bodybuilder back then or to even interact, I mean, I remember being outside of the New York Pro and having to wait for Sean Ray's autograph and standing next to Paul DeLay and being, you know, gee, this is the guy I saw in the book and I'm finally seeing him now. Can everybody relate to that? You know what I'm trying to say? Is that where you're going, Stu? Is that the mystique of of the scene back then? Well, that, that, that's the thing. These these guys were, you know, and, and I, I hope this isn't very too off topic. Uh, these guys were superheroes. These guys were celebrities. Yes. These guys were out of touch, you know? You know, I mean, look, I, I, I've told you the story before when I was out in L.A. the first time and, you know, uh, eating at the Firehouse restaurant and, you know, I glance over <laughs> yeah. to the right and there's there's Gary Stridham. And, you know, he's just sitting there eating his breakfast and he's the largest human being I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, he's wearing shorts and, you know, I casually glanced under the table and uh, he's, you know, his calves look like freaking watermelons. It was the freakiest thing I've ever seen in my entire freaking life. I, I, uh, bah, you know, and this, 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 this was a guy I'd seen in the magazine a thousand times. And, you know, you're telling yourself, don't stare. He's a regular person, right? but he's like the most insanely large human being I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, having experienced that, you know, that, that awe that, Oh my God, that's, that's Gary Strider. <laughs> you know, it's not like now where it's like you could, you could get into Dude, you being no one could get into an argument with a guy that was on the Olympia stage yeah. and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth yeah. on social media. Could, could, Seriously? Yeah, because you can look on to it. Gary Stridham has a Facebook page or, or, or uh, other social media. Uh, he's old. I'm sure he's on MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that he's on Facebook. I don't know. I like I like Gary Stridham a lot. He was one of the freaks back in the day. Hey, hey Lee Haney's on Facebook. He added me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, I mean, could you two relate to that, Chris? I mean, could you relate to the, the mystique? You know where I'm going with this? Like, it was good in a way, and it's it, it, both ways. It, yeah, it is both ways. Again, there's pros and cons to, to both. To, to every medium is going to have its own yeah. its own benefits and its own yeah. hindrances. Uh, you know, on plenty of forums, you get the chance to interact with professionals and with coaches and people who legitimately have accomplished stuff and whose advice you can you can benefit from. Uh, and on things like social media, you can you can interact with a verified uh, celebrity, like you're saying. But, uh, you know, you also have the, the anonymity is, uh, is going to be an issue. You don't always know who you're talking to. Um, you know, part of that, you can, you know, uh, part of that you can, um, you know, sort of expand on with the, the extended conversation on a forum. If you talk to somebody for weeks on end, you can kind of sort out, okay, this guy does know what he's talking about. That's fine. Even if he's not a professional, whatever. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Arash, but you know, the, the, uh, thanks for the take on that. Um, uh, Arash, could you see also? I want to get your take on this also. Is that because you and I, you know, we used to hang out at your old uh, restaurant and just this is before social media. We were talking. It was always us talking about the new up and comers. We were like talking about Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman constantly uh, hang out. You know, wherever we were. Uh, wasn't there more of a mystique to all this before the social media? You know, you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, it's great that we have social media, but is, did that mystique hit home with you where you couldn't get in contact with these people? It's like, of course. I think <laughs> – I totally agree. I know what you're talking about. I think it's not just with bodybuilding. Celebrities too. You know, back in the day, singers, actresses, actors, there was a certain mystique and they were just like the perfect, perfect person, you know. And nowadays when they're more in the – you know, <clears throat> in more – um able to communicate with them like the way Stu said you know arguing on the social forum with a, an Olympian when they're more in the spotlight in real life you see them everybody their flaws come to life you know you see the celebrities nowadays we know everything about them uh you know is that good I, I don't think so it's not it's not too great you know um I think social media does that as well you're you're you can be in touch with these people you can see them in a different light rather than just seeing their pictures in a magazine and they're like a superhero to you they become more of a real person so to speak well let's get uh, thanks for that I mean we could lead into actually 
with what we've discussed right here, something else came to my mind is that that's the pros and cons. We're basically talking about the pros and cons of social media. Uh, have Chris, have have the you know, being that you deal with the forums, have have forums had to change to keep up? I mean, I log onto some forums and the activity has gone down. It's nothing like. I mean, I can log onto some forums. I mean, there is one forum out there that the traffic is enormous, but that's a whole other beast in itself of why it's getting traffic. But I think that forums in general. What, what forum is that? Is that even <laughs> well, related, Brad? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it, it's it, it, that is. Uh, I, I'll just put it out there because you know, screw it. I, I there is a forum that does have tons of traffic, and, I, I, and I'm amazed by the traffic on there. I mean. The traffic is insane there, and it's a humorous forum. I think that the forum brings it the worst in some people. It's it's kind of where a lot – even a lot of pros have been on there. Mila Sarsev has been on there. I think Lee Priest was posting on there. I think that like even like um, – uh, Bob Chicarillo was posting on there, I think, and King Kamali was, Na- Nasser was. Now, that was a forum that had tons of traffic with actual pros on it. It still has traffic to this day, and that's getbig.com. And I have never seen one media – one – one forum keep up with the traffic of that site, from my observation. It's not the best forum. It is politically incorrect. It is rude. It is vulgar. But the other forums have not kept up. There is, it's, it's like a dead ghost town in some forums. I mean, do we think this is because of the uh, social media? Do, does, do forums have to keep up? You know, you work on a forum. You work on a site. Right. What do you think? Uh, I think it, it's part of it might just be the nature of the forums itself. You know, when you have a forum that's in existence for almost 20 years, you know, people are going to come and go, naturally. It's just going to be an ebb and flow to traffic. You know, people, whether they get disinterested in working out, whether they get sidetracked from being online, whatever it is. So, to that extent, traffic will will fluctuate naturally. Uh, oh, being in existence that long also, we have seen the rise of social media. And I don't think it's necessarily impacted the forums as much. Uh, people who want to be on a forum are going to be on a forum. They're going to discuss what they want to with the group they want to, uh, rather than going to a broader social media message board, essentially, a social media outlet, where you're just basically shouting your opinion and you may or may not get feedback from your friends. Uh, you know, you're not always going to get quality feedback. On a forum, you have that, that sense of community. Again, it comes back to a forum is a group. It's a community. And that's, I think that's, at the core, that's always going to be there. Whether Twitter comes up, whether Instagram comes up, whether Snapchat or whatever comes next, you know, a forum will survive if people on the forum want it to. Right. Now, I like what you said about the forums. I mean, the forums have been beneficial to us because I think it's great because you had this medium where you could actually hold yourself accountable and keep people could urge you to go forward with your fitness goals or any goal or a non-fitness related, whatever interest you have or aim you have, you could join an online community that maybe you can't access in real life. And when someone's in a 40 hour work week, how are they going to access a community that, that is interested in, let's say bodybuilding, hunting, biking, running, whatever it may be, art, you know, it could be anything. It's, it, I think that's what the beauty of forums actually is. And, um, with that, we're going to lead into the uh, issue of quality versus quantity. Mm-hmm. And the forums provided a certain amount of quality because in the whole mass of people, whether it was newbies, experienced people, inexperienced people, you know, trash talkers, you know, uh, people that just wanted a diversion to troll around – there were people, actually, some of the people that are, we consider big gurus these days who provided a ton of useful information for us, and there was quality in the forum. Now we have the issue of quantity. Uh, you know, as Arash, you pointed out that on a Twitter post, I'm actually, Chris and Arash pointed out before, is that Twitter post or a snippet takes a few sentences, a few characters, whereas a uh, forum had lengthy posts from people who had a lot of thought, a lot of content, people who really wanted to help people and thought about what they were talking about. Now we just got people posting sometimes maybe helpful tips, but just random things out there. And also this is the rise of, you know, people who have the serious credentials and experience versus people, as you say, you do sometimes, you know, never did a show or just lacking credentials or clearly maybe they entered a show and 
they, not just didn't place because there are people who don't place and look good and they know what they're talking about. They still look good, but then you have people who just enter a show. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Meaning that we've seen people who don't place who look damn good, but they didn't just didn't look good enough. But then we see people in a show who entered the show. You know what I'm trying to say? Well, I mean, it. You know, if we're if we're gonna go, you know, with that topic there, I mean, it's it's. You know, you, you compare the average person to the uh, the person who really, really takes it. I don't want to say to the extreme, but I mean, like, all right, like, you know, uh, I was coming to Arash before. It's like every time someone adds me on, on Instagram, I immediately look at their profile. And nine out of ten of them, you know, they're not competitors. They have physiques that to me just look like a high school athlete. And there's always something that says online coach or plans available. And I'm thinking, you look like an average person. Now – you know, you, you can't size someone up just just based on that. But you know, if you're going to take advice from someone in terms of uh, you know physique, uh, you want to at least know that someone could is capable of that or knows how to do that. You know, not that you need to go that way. But uh, I don't know, man. This is you know the I, I you know I I don't want to keep repeating things we've talked about in previous episodes. Right. But you know, with, with the whole social media thing, and I've talked about how, you know, people can prop themselves up, people can create personas, people can create the illusion of uh, being more credentials and more knowledgeable than they are. Um, you know, I was trying to think before, you know, just just, just on my own head, the pros and cons, social media and forums. Um, you know, look, if, if you want to start a web forum, well, that's a whole that's a whole endeavor. That's a whole thing. You want to start a Facebook group? It's free. There's no money involved. You make yourself the administrator. You instantly send out an invitation to every single Facebook friend you have and friend of your friends and all that stuff. People flock to it and, you know, you're the guy uh, answering everyone's questions because you've got an app on your phone and you know immediately when someone posts something and a question and you're always there to, you know, you're, you're the hand of God and suddenly people start <laughs> looking at you as you're the guy Well, because you're controlling everything, you know, now that's – it's no financial uh, investment. The, the, the time is, is very simple because, you know, we quickly grab our phones. Oh, quickly reply to this, okay. Um, you know, you steal articles from here. You post them up, you know, with your name on them. You know, look, we see that all the time. Um, look, you know, Brad, I, you, know, you know me. I, I, I will not drop names when we do these podcasts. But, you know, I, I see guys writing two, three articles a week. And all they're doing is reading someone else's article, interpreting a study. They put it into their own words. They put their name on it. They put it in their own, you know, Facebook group. And everyone starts seeing them as, wow, this guy knows everything. Shut up. You don't. You don't. Stop it. You know? But there, there is the, I don't know if you want to call it a pro or a con, depending on, you know, if you're using it for yourself, then it's a pro. Uh, if you're the person falling for this, well, then you're being conned um, of social media. Right. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think, I mean, I do think it's worthy for you to repeat yourself. I mean, it's not veering off topic because actually social media is giving the medium for people to do this. Some of them being very qualified – and some of them being not so qualified, right? I mean, well, they, they seem to greatly outnumber those who are qualified, right? And, and again, you, you know, we, we sound like bitter old men doing this, you know. <laughs> right, but I'm not, yeah, but no. you know, well, yeah, we are. But you know, and I, I, I always wrote this, you know, on, on on web forums. It's like you know, in order for me to give someone, uh, you know, to listen to what they're saying with it, and you know, any and give them any amount of credibility, I want to see actual. Uh, uh, knowledge, you know, degrees, all that, all that, you know, the stuff that, you know, they say is not important. I want to see that. Or, 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 not that they did one contest and got an okay shape, that they repeatedly got into amazing shape, right. okay? Repeatedly came out of the top. Repeatedly, and this is important, got other people besides themselves in shape and they placed at the top, okay? You give me one or the other. And if you get someone who did both, well, that's awesome, Okay. You did one show, you know, and I, I think I used this example last time. And you know, you placed top five out of uh, six girls in you know your bikini tall class H. Cl you know, it's like you know what? Most people don't know what that means. It means there were ninety bikini girls in the class, okay? And you got a top five placing just like the other eighty-eight girls did, okay? But the average person that looks pretty impressive, right? That's nuts, right? Very good points. I mean, Arash, like, you know, you're at the top echelon right now. I mean, you're an IFBB pro, and people think bodybuilding. I mean... They think you know, Arash Rabat. <laughs> but, I mean, I, we know. I mean, p people, in comparison, follow WMBF pro bodybuilding. When people think of, 
you know, they think of IWB. No, just, of course. Just, exactly. I mean, WMV is amazing, amazing competitors, but when we think of elite bodybuilding, we right think here. of – the UFC. Yeah, we, we yeah. think of IFBB, we think of the highest standards in bodybuilding. We think that, well, maybe it was harder to get a pro car back in the day, but we think IFBB Pro. So, um, And we have our very own right here. Yeah, a guy who I believe in, I'm not saying he's a friend, you know, a guy with a, a, an amazing physique and now competing uh, as a pro and will be competing in the new division, you know, the, the relatively new division classic physique. I mean, do, do you think there should be a not should be people are free to do what they want in our free capitalistic society. Hang a shingle, call himself a trainer, call himself a nutritionist. Do you think the con of this is that there are too many, you know, charlatans out there trying to make a buck off of bad advice or don't know what the hell they're doing? I mean, social media is what gave them this realm. You know, the books didn't do that. It was hard to get a book deal back in the day. Now you could write an ebook today on a PDF file. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So do you think that it's like, it's good and bad, right? I mean, you know. well, well, first off, thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, when, when Stu was talking, with, I'm not going to go too long on this because I, I feel like Stu hit the nail on the head. Um, when he was talking, there's two things that were just running through my mind, two words. Uh, one, mainstream, and two, supply and demand. The second one's not a word. It's two words. But, uh, you know, the bigger our sport gets, and we always say we want bodybuilding to become more mainstream. So, you know, these, these are the issues that, that come with it, you know. Um, when the sport becomes more mainstream, you're going to have a lot more people that have not been training for 10, 15, 20 years that j just jumped on and, and are going to have those stupid, you know, for lack of a better word, questions and, and not doing the research and so on and so forth. And the supply and demand, uh, unfortunately, the more, again, the more people you have, the more coaches you're going to have out there too. <laughs> when you have people that don't know what – the fundamentals, the basics of nutrition, how the body reacts to certain foods, what they need to do to cut, what they need to do to be in an anabolic state without putting on fat, how they need to train to build mass. Uh, you know, you're going to you're gonna have a lot of people looking for help. And that's when all these coaches pop up. Yes, I do not. I totally agree with Stu. I don't believe you should be calling yourself a coach unless you have the credentials that's, that Stu mentioned. Um but again, it's it's supply and demand. You know, you, these 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 new the newcomers to the sport, the up and comers, they they need they need help. You know, and and this is a sport where, um, unfortunately, not everybody, but it, it's you know, there's a lot of insecurity, there's a lot of vanity, and, and there's a lot of people taking advantage of that. I think you know, so, um, you know. I've been at this for 22 years now. I, I did it with magazines, books, forums. I learned a ton. I got myself in incredible shape many, many, many times. Um, and now, at, at the height of my career, now I'm an IFB pro. I, for the first time, for the new division, I hired a coach. It's it's the next level. I need help. I need another eye uh, to, to, tweak, to tweak some things, bring me in, uh, basically dialing in the last – few days the last few weeks is the toughest part um i'm not learning the fundamentals of what to eat and how to train from him you know so yeah i think there's just a lot of people out there wanting to compete now and that's something that we've wanted we've always said we wanted our sport to be mainstream well here it is mainstream doesn't mean you're going to have 10 dorian yates's 10 flex wheelers and 10 sean rays it means you're going to have a lot of people that have subpar genetics that haven't had 10, 15, 20 years of training and proper nutrition under their belts, coming to these shows, doing these shows, spending money in the industry, and, and this is what we have. So love it or hate it, you know, uh, I don't agree with a lot of stuff, but I am happy that the sport is growing. I am happy that the Federation brought this new division. I mean, I, I feel blessed. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I think it's a it's an amazing amazing opportunity for myself, many other competitors, and for the sport. I think this is going to help grow the sport, you know. So there's pros and cons, of course, hundred percent. There's pros and cons, but at the end of the day, I, I I'm happy to say I believe bodybuilding is not dead. It's not dying, and it's growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's what I'm very you know. Being a longtime fan, longtime guy in the gym, I I, I am you know pretty happy with the way things are going now that it is more accessible to be involved in this culture. I mean, I don't even think you have to call it a subculture anymore. I mean, there are people in that are not even gung-ho bodybuilding fanatics who know the 
terms and slang and just the jargon of, of bodybuilding. And they're not, they're not even hardcore bodybuilders. They know who Rich Piana is. They know who Louis Marco is. They know who the Hodge twins are. I mean, you know, some of them follow bodybuilding, but it's getting more people into the gym. It's getting them more interested. So there is a pro to all this social media, uh, getting people into the gym, getting more fit, healthy, and, and all that health conscious. And, uh, can I post something on here? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, we got Chris here, which is yeah, great. definitely. Which I want to get. Yeah, to I know. You know, and again, this is you know being being a long time uh, you know guy on T Nation. Um, you know, there have been times where people have talked about the 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 change in the direction of that site. Mm-hmm. You know, the the yeah, I see a smirk in her eyes. You know, <laughs> it's going. Yeah. Um, you know, there were times where it seemed they were going like real hardcore bodybuilding. You know, I mean, look, I remember back in the day, it's may have been before you. Uh, you know, buying my uh, grow protein powder in the packets, you know, the Tribex and the blue uh, pills. I remember they had a... Lemon uh, grow bars. Yes, yeah. those were good. Mm-hmm. And the peanut butter ones. I remember them having a booth at the Olympia. Yeah. Yeah, we're going back. Um, yeah. And then they, they changed over the years. So, oh, it was more of a, a general fitness. Oh, no, now we're following bodybuilding again. And, you know, just, just back and forth. I'm just wondering if there's any shift uh, specifically, specifically in... I guess the fact that, you know, like Arash was saying, maybe the whole fitness thing is becoming more mainstream. You know, social media, the people that aren't the hardcore bodybuilders, that aren't the guys winning contests, are the ones with millions and millions of viewers and making all the YouTube money and stuff like that. I mean, it's, you know, this is something I'm assuming you, you guys are well aware of. I mean, you guys right. are right on top of this stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, again, they've been at the top of the, the industry for since 1998, since the site first went up. And... You know, maybe the the core, or not the core. Maybe the, the overall focus has shifted a little bit, but it's always stayed uh, topical. So I think it's always stayed. Um, it's always tried to deliver the information that people want and need to to learn to read. Um, you know, back in 1998, it was the what a lot of people consider the golden age of competitive bodybuilding. You had Dorian, you had Ronnie, you had um, you know the whole crowd there, all the all the guys we now call legends. In the last five years or so, with things like CrossFit and, and you know, less of a, a hardcore attitude for the average person, you know, you need some le- some uh, different kind of information. Not everybody needs to learn how to, you know, get every, every head of the triceps out. Not everybody needs to know how to build a quad sweep. You know, people need to know how to deadlift. They need to know how to the basics like that. So it's it it changes a little bit based on, you know, what what people are looking to uh, looking to learn. You know, you know something. You know, uh, and I think you and I were talking about this last week. You know, we were talking about you know any changes. Uh, I know Teen Nation recently uh, changed. Uh, I guess their format. Things are a little different. The, the aesthetic. Um, we'll get the yeah, the aesthetic. aesthetic we'll we'll yeah. call it that. Um, you know, and, and, and there are things that remind me and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the old guy here trying to catch up like, Oh, they, they mom redecorated my room while I was at school. You know, wait, I don't recognize anything. Um, yeah. you know, there's, there, there's no more pages if, if, if you view a thread, you know, it's a lot more, uh, similar to the, the, the way threads run on, on Facebook, for example. Um, but something that, that I, you know, I remember, you know, you, you and I were talking about was, uh, I remember in, in uh, 2011, um, you know, you guys were doing the, the live feed, you know, yep, the live was, spill, yeah, yep. live spill, that's what it was. Yep. And, you know, people could kind of chime in as things were going on live. And, you know, aside from bodybuilding, a lot of the, the uh, people that I follow on Instagram, I, I follow a lot of artists and animators and, you know, digital painters and stuff. And uh, I, I see a lot of people using uh, programs like Twitch and Periscope. And, you know, these are these are video streaming things that allow you to to interact with them. Mm-hmm. Now, this is like five years after you guys were doing the, the live spill. Uh, you know, I was just wondering, it's like, you know, that was, you know, talk about being ahead of the curve. What, you know, what happened with that? Was there a good... Uh, do people like that? Do people not like that? I mean, you know, I, I'm just wondering because again, because I because I look at it now, right? And this is a big thing, you right. know. Like an artist will say, "I'm going to be on Periscope in 10 minutes," and mm-hmm. and people tune in like it's a right. TV show, For sure. and they can interact with the person. Yeah, they were doing that when they had the boot camps, the Indigo boot camps. They they flew a couple of forum members out to to Teen Nation headquarters out in Colorado, and they filmed it, and they they interacted. On the live spill, it was it was almost basically like a, a Twitter on their on their own page. Uh, you know, it, I guess it was technically ahead of the curve, yeah. And um, you know, it's it's innovations like that that 
you know, they come full circle. You know, it was popular then. It was it was a feature that you know a lot of people seem to respond well to. Uh, I don't know the logistics of why it didn't stick around, so I'm not going to speak to that. But uh, you know, it's definitely it was it was a it was a highlight. It was something that people really seemed to uh, to enjoy. See, I think with something like that, I think with something like that. And, and this may be why, you know, I, I think social media does, does so well, you know, the quick turnaround and stuff is it really is, uh, I guess, the feeling of, of uh, being a part of something as it's happening. You know, yes. I mean, look, there, there were times where I was, uh, I'd get into like a conversation, well, a conversation, but, you know, an interaction back and forth. And this is just like, you know, a thread in the forums. And, you know, this was before there were notifications like, oh, you know, Brad replied to your post. I... I couldn't wait to log back in the next day. Like, oh, you know, I, I, I hope so-and-so replied or this, that, or I wonder if we got any good answer. You know, I, I look forward to this, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and this was, you know, having to wait. Right. Obviously, you're waiting a lot less than, you know, like I was saying before with the magazines coming out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now with like the, you know, I, we, we keep dropping the term instant gratification. That's interacting with someone that you're, you're watching, a, a bodybuilder, an artist, anything. Like as this is going on, being able to ask questions, that's, you know, that's 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 that that inclusive feeling, I suppose. Right. I think that's what it is. Uh, that's one of the pros, actually, the inclusive feeling from all of this, being able to interact with people immediately, being able to uh, interact with people who you might even think uh, is a celebrity, are celebrities in, in a sense. I mean, they are our celebrities. Uh, I, I yeah, gotta, we, we got I a Ross right here? Well, yeah, I, I, one of my old-time friends turned into my, to my, to my, to a celebrity right here, a Ross Rabar. <laughs> So, uh, come on, man. You, you, you got to give yourself credit. I mean, you are an IFBB I'm pro. far from a celebrity. I'm just a hard yeah, yeah, but dude, you, you, you Come on. You walk in here with the shades on. It's night. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, you, you competed in, in, in um, the one of the three most important shows. That's the New York Pro. Uh, that's an, a major accomplishment. Uh, so I'll, I'll just put that out there. <laughs> so uh, just, just leave that here. Exactly. Yeah, there he's right here. Uh, I mean, I think that you have tremendous potential in the classic physique division, and uh, uh, I think you're going to do well. But besides that, I'm going to go into flow into something else here pertaining to social media, uh, and that is the concept of too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. Is that I am interested in getting to the effect this all has. I mean, we've gone over the effects on the person of what all this does to uh, someone. Uh, you know, in terms of the, let's say, let's just say that what what does all this do? What is all this information? And I don't know what how I could pick, make it a, a mental picture of it. This it, it almost seems with the social media. If you pay attention too much, it, it just seems like there's a bunch of like buzzing. <laughs> Freaking buzzing gnats around your head while you're trying to achieve your goal, so Such to a speak. Bunch of clucking chickens, man. You know what I'm trying to say around you? How could this cloud someone? Meaning that, like, you know, I'm aiming to do a show in September or October. You know, I'd like to do an AMBF show. You, you, no, no, no. I, and that, there are two shows in September and October. I'd like to enter one of them or both of them. Now, my program, personally, is not a perfect program. There is no perfect program, but I like the way it's going. And despite me uh, chiming in on social media or reading things or reading about other programs or ideas on social media, whether it's a forum or social media, I might chime in and pay attention a little bit and say my little snippet of what I think on something or join in on whatever capacity. But I am not letting the those buzzes in the background change my program. The program's going fine. I'm not changing the way I'm eating. I'm doing portion control, I'm not a contest prep yet. It's going fine. Um, how do we avoid? Should someone just simply learn to design their program and just turn it off? Meaning either turn it off and don't log on to social media, don't change your program if it's working, don't change your nutrition program. I guess that that is what we should be doing if things are going well. I mean, you've seen this before, Chris, right? I mean, you, out of anybody here, actually, you've probably seen it over and over. You, I've seen you in the beginner's forums on Teen Nation. 
the people are all – you read a post by the person and they're all over the freaking place. It's like I, I want to run a 440 and I want this vertical jump of Michael ja- Michael Jordan and I want to freaking – Michael I, Jackson. No, not not Michael Jackson and I want to dunk like – you know, jump like – like, you know, like a freaking long jump like Jesse Owens and like – and like, you know what I mean? And have an overhead press like, like Doug Hepburn or something. I mean – you know, you, you you've seen this before. Right? Where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, it it happens. I think that's that's a kind of a side topic to or related topic. It to is what but, you're talking yeah. about. It's you know somebody, you know somebody wants to get into training, and they go to a forum and they ask whatever question they want to ask. On a forum, because of its nature, because it's a community, you're going to get more than one answer. You're going to get different voices from different perspectives and different experiences, and more than one of them might be right. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to get a lot of good advice, but it still requires critical thinking to say, all right, I got five answers. I'm going to go with this answer and follow this advice, and that's that. So you could almost see it as a pro and a con, getting too much advice, uh, getting too much feedback, too many answers to your question. But you're going to get that on, on, you know, wherever you go. If you ask a question out loud, you know, you can't be nitpicky or complain about how many responses you get back. That's going to tie back, though, into the quality of answers, which, again, ties into, well, who are you going to listen to? Why are you going to listen to them? And that should help filter out what advice you do take. But, you know, the, the nature of the forum beast is, yes, you have a lot of voices that you're going to hear from. Right. Now, that that's 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 the excellent point. That, that's where I'm going here with this. In terms of our indiv- the in- our individual effects, and I think this this social media is affecting us in various ways. Besides, you know, just in life, you got all this information out there. Just, just you know, you got to turn it off sometimes. I mean, stick to your own guns. Uh, and I would like to segue into this, and then we'll wrap it up. Is this is that you've seen with the beginner uh, topic with mm-hmm. going in too many different directions? You know, the beginner's not taking his time. Where maybe he would be on a, a basic program like starting strength. And don't stop with that program until you reach that 315 for, for, for sets of five in the squat where you could have reached it faster if you didn't change all these programs. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, Yeah, program jumping is, is – training ADD is probably the worst mental disease I have seen on the internet. Too many people change what they're doing too often. But do, yes. do, you, do you think that's because of social media? Because there's this – Buzzing, yeah. or, you know, do you, or do you yeah. think that there was less of it when it was just a magazine and book day? Back when it was magazine and books, you had you were reading less. You had less voices that you were exposed to, so it was naturally. I think it's. I think again. I think it's a bigger social commentary. I think just attention spans in general go in nine different directions at once. Right. Exactly. Now the two experienced competitors here are Stu and Arash. I mean, does this have an effect in you? I mean, when is there a time where you know you trust your coach? Where you got these guys out there, and I, I mean, are our top competitors affected by social media? Do they do they read a snippet and you say, "Oh my God, someone said this on a forum. Should I be doing that?" No, 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 no you know, screw this coach. I'm I'm, I'm doing something else. Like, well, the, you know. I, I think it depends on the individual. If you're the type of person to to program jump, then you were doing it when the magazines were out, and now you're doing it a hell of a lot more <laughs> now that social media is big. That being said, to answer your question, I think back to my first pro show I did. Um, you know, I, I always made it a point not to look at other competitors, not to go on other people's social media because I, you know, you got to take everything you see and hear with a grain of salt, especially with all this Adobe and Photoshop. And <laughs> it's a, excuse me, but a lot of it's a lot of BS, you know. So I, I remember seeing one competitor, someone pointed out to me that's doing the same show as me. And I was like, wow, this guy looks absolutely incredible. Uh, he's, I, I figured he'd be the guy to beat and I thought he was going to take the show. Turns out he shows up. I see him there in person, and he looks like a completely different individual. Not even remotely close to being contest ready. He looked like he was about four or five weeks out, and it turned out he had a he had an app on his phone that he was you know making himself. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not even making. Yeah, no, I believe you. I know some um, guy who does that. <laughs> he ended up pacing like twelfth, I believe. Uh, he looked horrendous, you know. And I think it was just uh, maybe he started believing that he looked the way his, his photos were. You know, if you're going on your <laughs> it filtered Photoshop photos to see your progression, then you're just lying to yourself. So, you know, one thing I always tell people, don't look don't look at other people on social media. You know, I want to look like this person. Have you seen this person in person? 
Is this the way this person looks today or was this three years ago when they happened to nail whatever, you know, upside down diet that they were doing and now they're posting those pictures for the rest of their lives? I mean, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. It comes down to the individual. You cannot point your finger at other people or at social media and blame them for your idiocracies. You got to you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You got to do your own research and you listen to five different people you have to be able to determine which which one of them makes the most sense to you based on what you know thus far, your knowledge being vast or as a beginner. And you got to try things out for yourself and you got to put in the work. Try it. See if it works. Don't just ask somebody. Don't just go and say, what should I do? If you're not sure between three different training methods, try them all. See what works for you, you know? What you you know there's there's the forums and there's social media and there's the gym. The gym is is a form of its own. You're gonna learn a lot in that gym if you pay attention. If you put your phone away, and you put your hood right, on and right. you train and you train hard, you will learn a lot about yourself. You will learn a lot about your body, what you can do, and and your barriers and your shortcomings, and you push through them. That's you know. I posted something the other day where, you know, people always ask me, what's the best routine or what's the best time of day or type of cardio to do? I can answer that. I can sit here and, and, and give you my opinion. But you know what's more important than the, the, the type of routine or when to do the cardio? Intensity. If you take a half-assed, what we would believe to be a half-assed routine and do cardio at the worst time of day, but you do it at 110%, I yes. promise you, I promise you, you will move forward. You will keep moving forward and you'll make progress no matter what. Right. That, that's definitely I, – I, that hits home with me, the, the consistency. And many people are recognizing this now. Even some guys on TMAG actually, I've noticed you know, uh, Paul Carter and Chris Thibodeau, they're basically you know, saying the same thing that Arash is saying is that it's the consistency and effort. And these are strong, big guys who know everything about training, every, like pretty much everything basically that they would need to know. And they're saying the same thing that an IFBB pro is saying here. And Stu, I would like, you know, uh, your take on it, uh, this being the other competitor here, is that when do you just, you know, have you had a problem with it or you see other guys in the WMBF or IMBF or amateurs, you know, where you just got to learn to freaking tune things out and just say, you know what, this is working for me. It's great that you, your, your coach told you this. It's great that I'm seeing all these social media buzzing going on and, and just – that's it. I'll chime in, but I'm going to do my own freaking thing. When, when does it when does it come to an end? So you got to you know you, you got to do your own thing. Well, you know, it's like Arash was saying with you know the the individual. Um, you know, obviously people that are going to be towards the top, people that are going to be uh, successful repeatedly, uh, are going to learn to trust themselves. Are going to learn what what works. Um, you know, before I ever got on stage, I was training for 15 years. I had a pretty decent idea of what what was working at least in terms of training or and even just in terms of like basic nutrition um and that's from you know actual college classes that i was taking you know i mean i mentioned this before i was pre-med i took coaching classes i took nutrition classes this was just stuff that was interesting to me you know so when it came time to oh let, let's apply this stuff you know that kind of came to the forefront a lot more than what most people were reading in flex magazine you know and you got to take a lot of that with a grain of salt um, that first contest, look, you know, there, there was always, always the, uh, the worry, I'm not even going to say concern, I'm going to say worry that is there something I should be doing that would work better? Um, this guy does this, this other competitor does that, you know, I'm look, I'm very, very lucky when I did that first show, I did that first show, Dude, the two guys I was getting advice from Brian Whitaker and Jim Cordova. You know, Jim was the one who first talked me into doing a show in the first place. Now, when those two guys are, you know, looking at your photos and answering your emails and, you know, I didn't even hire them as coaches. They were just really just good guys. When they're telling me, yeah, you know, what you're doing looks like it's working pretty good, man. Just just stay the course. That's awesome. You know, I remember Thibodeau writing something to me saying, you know, I was like a week or two out. And he's like, you could do everything wrong from here on out and you'd still look awesome. That's that's a nice feeling, you know, and, and, and you know, in my case, the, the fact that I'm so anal about logging everything, I was able to go back, look at everything, you know, second show came around, I was able to look at where I was at the same point in, in the previous show. I mean, again, it, for someone like me, being, being, being so data driven and everything like that, it was it was easier to kind of put myself at ease. Now, if you're an erratic person who's always going to be worried, you know what, then it's, it's not just, you know, getting ready uh, for a contest or getting into shape. 
they're going to be like that about everything. And, you know, people like that are usually best uh, served working with one coach and staying the hell off of social media and uh, Facebook groups where people that really should not be giving advice are giving advice. Right. Well, on the other hand also is that do you think that now that makes an interesting point, not only with yourself, is that now being that you are advising other people, do you ever, do you or do you not run into people that seek your help, uh, whether it's just a tad bit of info here and there and advice or just your paid services, pre-contest prep services for your fee? Do you ever run into this issue? And again, I'm not being sexist here, but I just noticed that women, even me being a dietitian, I work with many women and many women ask me for diet advice is that do you ever go into the situation where you're helping them, they got your services they're paying for and they say, they'll, maybe they'll, someone will say something to you like, oh, but I heard, you know, I saw this post the other day and like someone said this and like this girl, I saw her post and like, she's doing this, she's doing ketogenic. You know, and, and I heard this. Do you ever run into this? And I'm, I'm sure it's more prevalent now than the book days because now they're just seeing this stuff come up immediately. They're, they're, they're talking and talking and talking. I mean, people are talking on Facebook during their workday. I mean, it's constant rapid turnover, and they're seeing these other women compete, other men compete. Do you experience that as well where you got to tell the client, look, stop looking. I know what I'm doing. Well, yeah. you know, here, here's the thing. You know, you, you never want to be that, that coach who, who says, look, shut up. <laughs> Trust me. Just do that. No, you, you don't want to do that. You know, you're, you're dealing with people here, and there's certainly a, a certain amount of, uh, I'll, I guess I'll use the term bedside manner and, you know, just you know, psychological understanding that people are in, in a panic state. That's something they've never done before, and it can be very, very stressful. Um, what I always do is I always, you know, something I say a lot, a lot to all my clients is we're in this together. We're in this together. Every time I make a change, I explain why. The emails I send people are sometimes, you know, if we're not making any changes that week, my God, they're like these psychological I got your back. Don't worry. Everything's working good. This, you know, it's like sometimes you need to just do something like that. Sometimes I got to pull a photo from two months ago and put it next to the most recent photo and say, I know you don't see the difference, but look at these side by side. You know, if they're so absolutely convinced they need to do this, I'll say, look, this is why I would advise against that. Okay. This is why what we're doing right now, I honestly 100% believe to be superior. Do you really think I would do something that I didn't think was optimal for you because my my name is on this. You know, you're going to go around after this and say, that's Stu Yellen. He really knows his stuff. Or you're going to say, wow, that guy really messed me up. Now, there have been a couple of people that have, you know, hired me and then they magically disappear after a week and then they totally bomb at their show and they never email me back and they never call me back. And then it's like, all right, um, what am I supposed to do? You know, that right. that's that's kind of a rough situation. You know, I, I, I have these, I know you've seen these questionnaires that I send people and there's, there's a whole thing at the end, which, which basically when they fill this out, it says, this doesn't work if you don't keep me in the loop. I expect to hear from you throughout the week. I expect you to answer my texts. I expect you to, because otherwise I don't know what's going on. You know, there's a girl who, uh, who hired me a couple of years ago and, you know, she, she took, you know, the starting plan and just ran and I didn't see her for like four months and, you know. I, I saw, thanks to social media, she got on stage and she was smooth and soft. Um, and now, you know, just recently I saw she did another show and, you know, she's thanking her coach and she looks a lot better. And I'm thinking, well, there you are with the photo with your coach. I never saw you again after you took that 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 first plan, you know. And that's the thing Thibodeau talked about that once, about how people would bastardize his programs and then say, I followed his program and it didn't work for me. That's a whole other thing. That's the, right. Yeah, that's, 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 there's a that's topic. A right. Of, uh, Right. Yeah. That is the whole thing. But I'm saying, do you think that it's just to wrap it up is that you think that it's affected by social media? I mean, that you think that it's becoming more prevalent? I mean, are they, you know, it's, it used to be, if you were the one person doing a contest and there was no social media, how many other competitors are you going to run into? If you're not training at Bev's gym, okay. How many competitors are you going to run into? When I first started competing at crap hole gym that I was training at, you know, in Queens, there, there were no competitors there. There right, no competitors there. Right, right, exactly. But what, what I'm getting at is that: Do you think that the program jumping or coach jumping is sometimes because of these images and posts on social media? Mean that maybe a guy or a gal will see something they're doing the right track. They'll say, "Oh my God, look at that guy!" Yeah, but you see, he's that's, shredded. But that's the thing. That's that's where social media is messing everyone up. Yeah, okay. They're in contact I'm with more competitors. They're in contact with look. Everyone's a coach. 
And every new coach is, one, going to lie about how many clients he has, is going to lie about his experience, is going to exaggerate a little bit when they say, well, you know, you're looking pretty good, but I bet I could do it a little yeah. bit because I took a, a class and I'm a park ranger and I, <laughs> I don't know what, you know, something totally unrelated to, to, to what you're doing or or – here, I wrote all these articles and, yeah, you know, uh, here, that Stu Yellen guy. Yeah, he won a lot of shows. He's got a bunch of pro cards and blah, blah, blah. And his clients always come and shredded. But uh, I, I charge less. You know, you know there's, there's, there's always the that's, angle. Yeah, that's you know, the there's, social there's, media. There's always the angle. But that's what I'm saying. You know, you're suddenly in contact with all these people. And, and it's not, you know, the advantage of social media is it costs nothing. It costs nothing. Right. Again, it's, it's the individual. If you're that type of person, social media will accentuate it, you know? Uh, I have many, many people, many friends around me that are very knowledgeable. I've done a lot in the industry and disagree with a lot of things that I'm doing now with my coach, but it's working. And I stick with it and I have confidence in him. I did my homework before I hired him. And so, you know, I... uh, I do what, what we think is best for me. You can't just go running around looking for better information, a better program, a better diet. You know, yeah. um, everyone's going to tell you they think you should be doing something different. You can't listen to everybody. Right, exactly. Uh, now, Chris, uh, just to wrap things up, and we're going to tie it all together now, is that uh, do you have any uh, other words on social media in general? Anything that else that we didn't go upon, touch upon, that you would like to no. chime in on? or? No. Um, no, like Arash was just saying, I think it does, it all ties back to, to who you let yourself be around and the information you let yourself take on. If you go wandering social media and you fall for the low quality, like Stu was saying, the people that have, you know, make believe credentials that have trumped up credentials with nothing behind them, then you're going to end up getting bad advice. If you find yourself into a quality forum with quality members like T Nation, um, so go sign up. Uh, you're going to be around experienced lifters. You're going to be around people who know what they're talking about. You're going to be around people who you can you can easily check on. You can look at post history. You can see what contests they did. You can see in their training log what they just lifted. So you know, be choosy about the the company you keep, just like Mom said. Exactly, and I mean, uh, I'll just chime in. Is that and then this is that, you know, even being a dietitian, you know, just the sheer amount of blogs and forum posts and social media updates. I mean, even just my profession outside of, you know, the fitness world, just nutrition, dietetics in general, the fitness fads that are perpetuated amongst regular people who do not understand nutrition, do not understand nutrition, metabolism, or dietetics in general is very frustrating to me, even in my profession being a registered dietitian. So, You really got to be careful who you take advice from, look into the person's credentials, look at their character, their personality, their reputation, and go from there. So uh, that's it for today, and I think it was a great conversation. I'm glad that I had the people with me today to discuss all of this, and I hope that you found it very helpful for you, and you know, I I hope that it will benefit you going forward in your health and uh, bodybuilding or athletic endeavors. So uh, that's it. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.